everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina and today I want to talk about a topic that has been bothering me for a while now. As you can hear, I kind of have a cold at the moment. The weather is terrible this time of year in the Netherlands. It's just raining constantly and it's cold. But what I'm going to talk about today is a sort of follow-up on the video that I did months ago about intersectionalism, about whether or not veganism should be involved with other uh, justice movements or social justice movements and whether we should be more intersectional in our approach. So whether intersectionalism was damaging or helping our movement. And my conclusion at the time is kind of what I feel the same about today, um, is that ultimately, ideally, intersectionalism sounds great, but it only works if all movements agree. Ultimately, it only works when all movements are like, yeah, I see you, I understand your cause, I want to help you. And like, we support each other, and it all becomes one big justice movement, liberation movement. Just like, we are all against all oppression, we're all against all discrimination when it comes to gay or queer people or transgender people or women or patriarchy or... Uh, race, uh, police brutality, or like anything like you can think of, the human-centered um, liberation or justice movements are all pretty much in alignment. There's a couple exceptions. You have, for example, um, trans-exclusionary radical feminists, also called TERFs, basically feminists who don't believe that trans women are women or should be seen as women. But apart from things like that, most justice movements are in alignment with one another. Animal liberation and veganism seems to be standing outside of that for some reason. Like, speciesism and carnism is just a much larger ideological obstacle to get over. And it's very hard to talk to other people in justice movements about this. Uh, which brings me to what I'm going to talk about. So I posted on the subreddit r slash askfeminists. I'm just going to read my post to you. It's called, Can One Be a Feminist and Not Vegan? This post was removed within 40 minutes because it was too controversial and it was like bringing too many trolls to the subreddit or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to read it. Can one be a feminist and not vegan? This question is especially addressing the intersectional feminists on this subreddit. Feminism is a stance against social, political, cultural, and economic systems that oppress women in our society. We want equal rights and equal opportunity for all genders. But why would this philosophy of anti-oppression only encompass one species of female animal? Take the dairy industry, for example. To start milk production, dairy cows are forcibly impregnated through artificial insemination. A farmer sticks their fist in the cow's anus to hold their cervix in place and then puts bull semen into her vagina through a syringe. If this were done to a human woman, we would call it rape. Then she is forced to carry her baby to term without her consent. Once she gives birth and has built up a strong bond with her baby, her calf is taken away from her within hours or days after birth. The mother cow wails for her child, sometimes for days afterwards. She never sees her child again. If the calf is male and cannot produce milk, he is either seen as a waste product, killed immediately, or raised for only three months to be sold and killed for veal. If the calf is female, however, she never sees her mother again and starts the cycle of impregnation and milk production herself. The average dairy cow goes through three or four pregnancies back to back, constantly forced to pump her milk, drained day after day of a resource she naturally produces for her child. After five years of this cycle, dairy cows are exhausted. Often they can barely walk anymore. They develop lameness. Sometimes they die due to exhaustion. But most often, after their milk production has declined to the point it is no longer profitable for the farm, they are sent to the slaughterhouse for low-grade beef. Cows outside of the industry could live up to 20 years old. So, my question. 
How can anyone consider themselves a feminist while funding an industry that systemically exploits and oppresses female animals, an industry that allows these female animals no autonomy over their own body, that doesn't give them a basic right to their own life? It's painful to see how many people are ignorant of this oppression happening right under our noses, but now that you know, what is your response? And the responses I got were disappointing, let me tell you. I don't disagree that the food industry does some awful things. I want that to change. Animals do deserve respect, but I don't think that means they get the same treatment as humans. Where in my post did I say that? I never said we should treat cows like humans. Uh, we should give cows clothes and give them a house and give them like abortion rights like that's not what i'm saying we should give them a, oh we should give them a driver's license like that's not what the, what the fuck that's not what i'm saying at the end the only thing i mentioned is bodily autonomy and the right to life those are not the only two rights humans have those are basic basic rights that every sentient being deserves just by virtue of existing feeding my family comes first if I have to kill a deer or catch a fish to do it, I will. If there was a way to just stop all meat production in the world and still have enough grown food to feed everyone, I'd listen to the proposition. Oh, you would listen to the proposition if it were possible to feed the world without animals. Here's some data. We could free up up to 70% of the land used for agriculture right now if we transition to a plant-based food system because over 60% of the crops that we grow in this world are fed to animals, which we then decide to turn into products to eat when they only give us a fraction of the calories back. It is an incredibly inefficient system, and we could feed the world 100% better if we were all plant-based, period. But people's diets vary based on what's available. The Inuit people eat a ton of meat because that's what's available. I don't think they're oppressing the animals there. They're hunting. First of all, I'm not talking about Inuit people. I'm talking about you who are currently reading my post on Reddit. I don't think Inuit people who don't have any resources have access to Reddit to read my post. Necessity is a completely different situation than the one I described in my post. So thank you so much for not even reading it. I guess my point is, while I do think the meat industry we've built in most first world countries is pretty vile and in need of reform, I don't see how it can be compared to human suffering. Personally, I would say that the, the animals that we put through this have worse suffering than most humans on this planet. Let's use the example of like broiler chickens. They are killed after about six weeks of life. They are stuck in these huge barns. They don't have any room to walk. They start pecking at each other. They start losing all their feathers. They, they, they fatten up to the point that they're not able to walk. Like you can give examples all over the animal industry. This is standard practice. This is just the way that it happens every day to millions and millions of animals. Of course, I don't deny that there are things like forced labor and child labor happening in other countries. And that is something I condemn too. That's something I don't want to contribute to either. But to say that animal suffering is always inferior to human suffering, even when like, oh, a, a human stubs their toe or a human accidentally cuts their finger with some paper. Is that suffering fundamentally more valuable or more valid because it's human suffering compared to an animal getting their head cut off. Like really think about what you're saying. And the next comment. This post reminds me of the ad PETA did comparing chicken to women and saying that it's hypocritical to be okay with eating eggs but being against women being caged and having their eggs removed. There are definitely problems with the industry that should be addressed and changed. But one can absolutely be a feminist and not be vegan and not being vegan doesn't necessarily mean you're not advocating for animals to have better conditions. This point about reforming the animal industry or changing it or having better conditions for animals is wild to me, just, just in relation to the post that I made. It's just, it's becoming increasingly clear that people don't read each other's posts on Reddit. What I described in the dairy industry, it's all standard practice. It's all necessary to be done for the industry to be profitable, period. 
none of that was, according to the industry themselves, unnecessary cruelty. If you do see it as unnecessary cruelty, which I do and which vegans do, abolish the entire industry, boycott the industry if you don't agree with what they're doing. Forcibly impregnating them is necessary. Taking the calf away is necessary because otherwise the milk would go to the calf, none of it could go to humans. Then where's the product? Where's the money? All of this, like this, this oppression is fundamentally linked to seeing animals as products and as objects for us to use as resources for us to exploit. And it frustrates me to no end when people who are so invested in oppression and in society and in injustice and they just cannot see it. They just don't see it. Like I, I lay it out in excruciating de detail and they do not understand. And then they bring up the fact that I'm sort of equating women with female in my posts by saying female animals, but saying that feminism is a cause for equality uh, for all genders and for women. And then they say, um, you can argue this is just semantics, but female is sex, not gender. And yes, it is semantics. Because feminism, like even though, even though feminism is not just about biological sex, they do fight for reproductive rights. So saying that like the bi like the, the reproductive system of cows is not relevant here because they are female and they don't have a gender identity to me is just semantics. That is just you're not willing to engage with the point that I'm making that they're being ex exploited for their reproductive sy systems and that they die of exhaustion because of the way we treat them and we we kill them. We kill them. I cannot stress this point enough. We kill them for their bodies. We use them for all that they're worth and then throw them away like they're nothing. How can you not see that these causes and these movements are interrelated? The ignorance is unfathomable. You can be all for abortion rights and fight for uh, the right to abortion in the US. I know it's a huge topic right now. And I'm scared for all the women out there who do not have access to abortion. Like that's horrible. That should be a right for women. But to then look at the situation of dairy cows and see them be forcibly impregnated and have to go through forced pregnancy like many, many times and then be like, well, that's not my problem. I don't care. Well, that's literally what you're fighting for when it comes to women. And when you look at cows going through the same thing. Um, the next person is referencing what I said about that if this were done to a human woman, we would call it rape. And they say, I mean, most animal reproduction, farmed or otherwise, would be rape if we applied it to human women. Looking at you, ducks. Yeah, ducks are terrible. But I think it's unhelpful to make those comparisons because the issues that human women have and the issues that ducks might have are born of different causes and literally cannot have the same solutions. Animal rights are important, but it's a completely different issue than feminism. I do agree that they're different causes. I never said that as movements they're the same. That's not what I said. I, I think that they're similar enough that you have to be consistent and be part of both. What I'm saying about artificial insemination, that's something we as humans do to dairy cows. That's not something that cows are doing to each other. Uh, of course, there's animals that rape each other, and I'm not saying that's okay. I'm just saying that's not something that we are doing or that we are responsible for. If there's an evil that we are responsible for as humans, we should stop doing that. <laughs> you can look at the natural world and see all the terrible things that happen there. Like, oh yeah, animals eat each other and animals rape each other. So like, it's okay for us to do that. That's not a conclusion that you can just draw from nature. There's morality and there's nature. Sometimes we need to be moral instead of do what's natural because it is objectively better for our and their well-being. The next comment. I don't argue with people who equate human women with female animals. That actually walks us back. Yes, the meat industry and dairy industry are abhorrent in our country and should be reformed, but that's an issue separate from societal discrimination of humans. 
Moreover, a vegan or nothing stance doesn't seem to do anything for working conditions of farm laborers or the environmental impact of shipping non-local produce or the colonial impact of over-harvesting in countries we consider third world. Not to mention the stance on honey is so counterproductive. So much in this paragraph. First of all, saying the meat industry is horrible in this country, the U.S., they're probably talking about the U.S., um, it's in every country. The meat, the meat industry, the animal industry, dairy, eggs, everything is horrible in every country. 90 to 95 percent of animals worldwide are factory farmed. That's not just the U.S. That's not just the Western world. A vegan or nothing stance does nothing about the working conditions of farm laborers. It sort of does. Um, it's not part of the whole movement of animal rights or animal liberation. But if you watch the video that Ed Winters just put out about uh, there's three ex-slaughterhouse workers giving their testimonials about what it was like to work in a slaughterhouse. It is completely inhumane conditions to work in and to be in not just as an animal, as a victim of the slaughter, but also as someone who through their like their economic status and not having uh, an ability to find a better job are forced to work in those conditions. No one wants to work in a slaughterhouse or the environmental impact of shipping non-local produce. Ideally, we would have a more local food system, but when it comes to the, uh, the emissions and the, the, the environmental impact of our food system, the largest part of it is from livestock themselves and from the food that has to be grown for them. It's the animals themselves that we breed billions and billions and billions of them every year just to consume them when we don't need to. They're just creating problems that wouldn't exist if we didn't do this to them. And then the, their third point was, or the colonial impact of over-harvesting in countries we consider third world. Like everything that this person is saying is just, what about this? What about that? What about that? No, I'm talking about this issue right now. You're diverting attention. It's not what I'm talking about. Like all those things are bad. I agree all those things are bad. But as a feminist, if you care about the oppression of women and females, you should care about the oppression of female animals in animal agriculture. And that's just the fact of the matter. Animals eat animals. It's natural. And as someone with an animistic worldview, these fucking spiritual people, I a, do not consider myself above animals and therefore do not separate from the food chain and b, consider plants to have spirits as well. So, so choosing to only consume vegetation would be arbitrary. Really, I am done with this level of ignorance. The next thing they say is, I was vegan for a while. I still cook vegan meals and think people in our world would benefit from eating more plant-based foodstuffs. But equating animal rights with women's rights is reductionist and frankly insulting. You just said that you don't see yourself as above animals. Then why would you think that our issues are superior to their issues? Wouldn't you be just as much in favor of animal rights and plant rights if you see everything is having a soul like what is what is this person's world view the next comment people can be feminists and not be 100 percent perfect every step anyone does to fight for feminism is a good one to say that a person can just be a real feminist when vegan also undermines everything we are fighting for so just on the surface of it, I understand this person's point, but what this person does not understand is the definition of veganism is striving for animal liberation. It's doing the best you can. It's already in the definition. I'll show it on screen right now. As vegans, we strive to do the best we can to not contribute to the oppression of animals in the same way that feminists do that with feminist issues and that uh, anti-racists do that with racist issues. And the last comment that was able to be posted underneath my post before it was removed by the mods of r slash ask feminists um, is this. I don't think comparing women to animals helps the feminist cause. First of all, humans are animals. Scientifically, humans are animals. We are mammals, just like the cows I was talking about. We're not as different as you would like to think. Second of all, they're saying, I don't think it helps the feminist cause. What I'm talking about is intersectionalism, is recognizing oppression wherever it occurs. I'm talking specifically about intersectional feminism. Sure, fem feminism 
on its own is only a, a thing and a movement focusing on human women. I recognize that. But whether or not it helps the cause, that's not the, the thing. It's like being stronger as an intersectional movement, uh, a coalition, let's say, of justice movements. Animals are oppressed because of their species, which is speciesism, and oftentimes because of their gender and the reproductive system. Feminists should recognize this intersection and be like, wait, there's something wrong over here that's actually very similar to the issues that we are fighting against. Maybe we should go help over there. But there's not one single positive or supportive comment in this thread. Because, as I said in the beginning, I'm very disappointed in in people in other justice movements not recognizing the problems here and the way that everything is connected in a way and that all oppression is bad everywhere and as much as i would love to be a more intersectional movement um i don't know whether it's possible if people will keep being this ignorant even if you spell it out for them Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. You can watch my earlier video on intersectionalism here. Please like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe. And um, I'll see you in the next one, I think. So, bye.